Hey guys, Music Guy here, Paul Ventura, and today I have a bit of a tutorial for you all. I'm going to teach you how to use addictive drums in Ableton Live specifically. Uh, the interface is going to be pretty much the same no matter what digital audio workstation you're using. I happen to like live, that's what I'm using. And I'm doing this video in particular because my friend and drummer, Frankie, and I have a bit of a side project called Trophy Kids. Uh, you can check out, I'll put a link in the description. We'll have songs up there soon so you can check those out. But anyways, um, we live in different cities, so the best way that we can work on music together is I come up with ideas for the most part, sans drums, and I'll record you know, my guitar and my vocals and everything, render it down to a wave, send it over to him, and then he can add in his, uh, his ideas on drums using Addictive. So I just got him set up with Ableton Live and Addictive Drums, so we have virtually the same setup going for each other, so it makes it pretty easy to swap ideas. And just thought I would give him a quick overview on how to use it, and thought I would share it at the same time with anyone else who is interested. All right, so I've opened up Ableton Live right now, and you can see over here I've selected my plugins. So I can either click and drag this over onto my MIDI track, and you can add tracks by uh, just go up to Insert and Insert MIDI Track, or just an audio track, and then there's little shortcuts which I generally use. So we can drag and drop that just anywhere on this MIDI track, and that will add that to that, or we can just double click, and it's going to add that to that MIDI track because there's nothing on it as of right now. So that's going to load up and there's your main interface for addictive drums. Pretty sweet, you got your whole kit set up right there and you can click on any of these little uh, any of these drums in the interface here to get an idea of what they sound like. And you can swap out different uh, different pieces of your kit, different snares that you want to get different sounds. And then to go one step further you can click on the little E to edit the uh, individual settings for any of these different drums. So we have like, you know, for the snare, we can say, where do we want the mic placed? Do we want more or less buzz on the snare? Do we want uh, to mess with the EQ, the pitch, compression, volume, filter, anything that you can think of basically to get the sound that you want, just as you would in a real studio, you can do right here in the editing section. All right, so you can do that with any of these different uh, pieces of your kit, basically. And then up here, I want to point out, we can click on the startup, and then we just have a bunch of presets, which are going to change, in some cases, the actual drums and cymbals used in the setup for the kit. So you can see a few of these changed on the metal lick setting. But more than just the pieces of the kit, it's going to go in and change the, uh, the placement of the mic and all these different edited settings that we can choose from for each of these drums to give you a very different sound in each case. So um, I'm going to show off how that works, the difference, in just a second. But just to keep going up here, we have FX, which you can mess with like the reverb on the kit. So kind of change the setting where you would be recording your drums in to give you more functionality there. I generally like to add my own reverb later, so I don't mess with any of that. I don't add or change anything there. And then we have Beats, which is just a bunch of uh, already in the system beats that you can mess around with. They have like full songs and different parts. So we have like straight beats here, you know, eighth note, hi-hat, special one. And we can click on the arrow to kind of expand on each of these. And then we have different... Uh, options all within the same kind of umbrella of that eighth note hi hat special one, but for this uh, straight beat zero zero one, and it gives you kind of the default beat per minute and the time that it's meant for and everything like that. But you can uh, so we can just click on the uh, the play right here, and you can hear what that's going to sound like. Just there's a straight beat with just you know different things going on on the hi hat. And then we can hear it at different tempos by clicking on the tempo and then changing the tempo in Ableton. Slow it down, speed it up, whatever you want to do. I'm going to put that back at 120. And then also, as I was showing you the different kits, so now it's, we can actually hear it. There we go. So we can try these, uh, we can use these beats to find a kit sound that we like. Just scroll through them and hear the... Uh, that beat on different settings right there. 
So anyway, that's enough of that. And then you have down here, you know, your master controls and you can uh, volumes for each of these individual pieces of the kit, and you can change those here as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can have a lot of fun, spend a lot of time getting the kind of sound that you want. You can make your own kit and then save it with the, the settings that you want. But anyway, so that's basically that. Um, let's get into actually how to use it in Ableton. So what I have is I have a new track that I've been messing around with. I rendered it down to a wave, just called it opening track. So I'm, I'm dragging and dropping this uh, existing track that I've done from my desktop right there into the audio track. And these are called clips or clip slots where so I'm dropping a clip of pretty much the entire song of this opening track that I made and I'm just dropping it right there in a clip and then you can see down here the original beat per minute of this song that I did was 73 so I'm just gonna drop down there my tempo in Ableton Live to match that and now if you play that little feedback and there's the track playing. So it's important to note, so I can turn that off. That's going to turn off any clips that are playing if you click on that while it's red. Uh, so these are just in the clip section. This doesn't mean it's actually on the track. So if we want it on the track, we need to highlight that clip, which is what we're going to do, and then copy it. Control C. All right. Best way to do that. And then come over here. So we have session view selector, and we have arrangement view selector. So I'm going to uh, select the arrangement view selector and then here we are we still have our tracks our audio and our MIDI track and I'm just gonna paste that right there on three so on the, the third right there so we can start it from the beginning let's put on our click track two three four and the feedback comes in right here okay so now it's on the actual track and we can render it out like that and that's how we would have to do that so now let's get into actually adding drums to this song. So I've got my uh, Addictive Drums MIDI track right here. And I'm just going to double click on this open clip slot. And there, that gives me uh, one, one uh, segment right here that I can start adding drums on. And we have our little keyboard here, which we can play with our actual keyboard. And I'll click on this little headphone icon so we can actually hear what we're doing. So we have our little keyboard in here, and we can. Uh, we have to click the arm session recording button. I forgot about that. So, click that. The get that to highlight red there, and now. There we go. So I'm just playing on my keyboard, hitting different letters, which correspond to basically keys on a keyboard, on a musical keyboard, and each of those is assigned to a different uh, note on your uh, or a different drum I guess in this case for the addictive drums kit alright so just take some time to learn where everything is for each note so I know that the C1 is the kick and I know that the next few above it so I'm just uh, by the way I just double clicked on that segment to create that beat okay and then we can just highlight that note and then just move it around anywhere we want so moving it up is obviously going to change the uh, the drum in the kit that's going to be playing for that time and then moving it left to right is going to change the time in which in which it plays and then we can come up here to the bar click it left click it and then go up or down I'm holding down on the on the mouse and scrolling up or down and we can get zooming in very very specifically so if we have like a very complicated rhythm or something like that and we need a lot of different notes in there then we can zoom in there however you need to get it done this is pretty straightforward melody just uh, or a rhythm for this track which I'm showing off here so I'm gonna keep it as zoomed out as possible here and now if I want to uh, just focus on this MIDI track. I just click on the S for the solo. So this is all I'm going to be able to hear. And I'm just going to play that, let that play through. And it's going to play on repeat. 
so I can just edit this and uh, add to this rhythm. So let's see. I'm trying to think of what would sound good for this. <laughs> this is why I'm not a drummer because I have no idea what just to show you. So you can see it's pretty straightforward, very intuitive. I'm just highlighting notes. I'm copying them with control C and then hitting control V to paste them in wherever I want. So that's fine. So now let's just say I want that basic melody. It's probably terrible for this song or <laughs> there should be more to it, but that's fine. I'm just trying to show you off, and I want to get back to the standard. This is kind of startup. Let's go back to startup. We can hear that. Okay. So now let's put it on the actual timeline of the song. So that's my beat, and we can uh, right click and rename this. Just call this like you know intro or however you want to uh, remember it as, and then just left click on it. Control C to copy it. I'm going to go back over to the arrangement view selector. And then right below this audio track, which I pasted the uh, my WAV file of my song onto, is my MIDI track. And I'm just going to highlight right there to uh, coincide with the beginning of that audio track. And I'm going to Control V. And there we go. That goes from 3 to 4. That is my beat I just created and it's in sync with the opening of that song. Actually, I might want to move it to five because I think I have, this is all right here. This is all just the feedback. So this is when the actual song starts on five. So let's hear how it sounds from the beginning. Got our click. And here we go. There we go, turn that up a little bit just so you can hear it. And as you can see, I'm just, uh, it's just going to keep repeating the same part over and over again. And I can just click the end of, it, end of that segment and just drag it as many times as I want it to repeat. Uh, you, can, uh, you can highlight like a, a specific part of it, say you like that whole... You like that uh, as your kind of your basic beat, your rhythm for most of a specific part, like a verse or something. But then, you know, right here you want like a little fill or something, but you don't want to create, go back in here, create a fill especially for that. What we can do is we can just come in, highlight this part where we want the fill, or even just like the second half of this part. Wherever we want the fill or whatever we want to change, Control X is going to cut it. And then we can paste it right back in, and now it's separate. And it's any changes we make to this will not be reflected in the rest of this track. Because if I make any change to, if I just highlight this right here, I can change the beat just as easily. The problem is, it's going to affect this entire segment, which might be what you want. Maybe it's not what you want, in which case, if it's not what you want, you should do what I just did. And cut that piece out that you want to specifically change and then paste it back in and then make the changes so you can see that's different now we have that crash doesn't sound right at all but anyways um just to demonstrate my point basically so if you want to uh just focus on a specific part then that's what you want to do or if you prefer, I mean, it's really up to you. You could just come back here and create every track that you want um, right in here, including fills and things like that. I would recommend using uh, using the uh, what is this? The session view selector area to create like you know your intro, your chorus, your every specific you know like major part like that, and then you know just paste them in wherever you want them in the song. You know they would just go there. You just highlight each part and put it in wherever you need it. And then when you want to make a like a tiny change or something like that, you know, just go in, cut that part out, and just tweak whatever you want to. But it's really up to you. You can just you can create all your tracks in here in this in this view, and they give you you know an infinite number of tracks. It just keeps going as many as you need. Just scroll down, 
and that's basically it. You can uh, you can create you know every single part in here, including the fills. Um, it's really up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. So I think that is pretty much the overview. Um, also, want to mention we can we can mess with the volumes for each of these beats that I've put in here. I'm doing Control A to select all these, by the way, so you can do them all at the same time, or you can tweak each one individually. And just select a beat, and then there's your volume for that beat. So it's kind of cool in the case of Addictive because you get completely different sounds by turning it all the way up on this uh, this kick. You can hear you just like really just slamming right in, right into it, whereas you bring it down to about 50%. And it's more just like a kind of nudging it, you know. And it's great for uh, it sounds even more as you bring it down there. And it's great for like a build if you want to like go like do 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 something like that, you know. And every drum is going to react to this to changes on the volume slider differently. So that's slamming on the uh, on the snare there, or if you just want to. Just kind of tapping it, and you can get really get different effects out of uh, addictive just by changing the uh, the volumes on the sliders here for each of your parts. And remember, just like with any changes you make to actual parts uh, in a whole, you know, when you're just dragging like a whole segment like that, if we change the volume every single every time we hit that snare that that uh, that first time, it's going to be reflected every single time every single repeat on this uh, on this segment. So just keep that in mind that it's going to be reflected that change every single time. And for the most part addictive is kinda has this human element to it so it's not gonna if you just have like uh, eight, eight um, snare eighth notes or something like that they're not all gonna sound exactly the same so it sounds robotic and fake. That's the cool thing about addictive it kind of it's naturally uh, they, they reproduce the sounds pretty naturally as a human player would on a kit because it's not going to be the same thing every time if you're in there hitting that snare and but if that's not enough for you then I recommend let's just get I already have this one here so I have four snares right there so we can just kind of tweak each volume a little bit just kind of go up and down and it's not much, but it makes it seem a little more realistic sounding. So you can hear how each one of these sounds slightly different. Just as if you were playing it on a real kit. Not every hit would come off at the same intensity. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, you can mess with the, uh, the time signature up here. You know, you get like waltz time kind of and mess with things like that I'm not really sure what else I should cover when it comes to addictive um, yeah to bring up the uh, the interface again just highlight the MIDI track and then come down and click on the little wrench and that that will bring up the uh, the kit itself so you can make changes if you would like to that as well and the little play button here is gonna change for whichever plugin you're working with in this case it's a lot of different a lot of different changes uh, for the different settings for the sounds, but I like most of it that I can change right here in the edit section for each individual drum, so I don't mess with that too much. And yeah, I guess that's basically it. Sorry for my rambling, but I hope you get the idea. I recommend Addictive. Great plug-in. Uh, very realistic sounding drums, and it'll probably get the job done no matter what you're trying to do. So give it a try you can check out their demo addictivedrums.com they have a free demo you can check out and yeah thanks for watching the video and i will see you guys next time